Bitmain, the largest global Bitcoin miner, is buying over 20,000 wafers per month from TSMC, more than graphics card manufacturer NVIDIA. In comparison, if I lived off of vanilla wafers for more than one month, I don't think I could possibly eat more than one-tenth that amount in the same period. I'd also be ridiculously unhealthy, incredibly tired of vanilla wafers, and have literally zero additional Bitcoins in my account. Weiss Ratings, an investment ratings firm that literally no legitimate investor paid attention to until today, is releasing the ratings of the crypto market. Speculators are expecting the report to have a strong impact on the rated tokens. I did some research on their company, and I'd rate them a big F-. However, when it comes to their gimmicky marketing tactics, they deserve an A+. Also today, Brazil now has nearly twice as many Bitcoin investors as stock investors. Why? Because of those massive gains. Brazil may not have a major space program, but with all these crypto investors, there's no doubt they're going straight to the moon. It's Wednesday, January 24th, 2018, and this is the Crypto News Show. This is Nick O'Neill for the Crypto News Show, and I am back from out of town. Today, I'm switching things up a bit. We are going to fly through a bunch of top stories to catch you up on the latest in crypto news. First up, the SEC chairman is signaling that many ICO creators could be in for a rude awakening in the near future. Yesterday, a transcript of the SEC chairman's video conference with University of Pennsylvania students was published to the SEC's website. Unsurprisingly, he opened addressing ICOs head on. He stated that many promoters and lawyers are misleading entrepreneurs into believing their crypto tokens are not securities just before they go on to raise millions of dollars. While we haven't seen any action taken yet, the chairman states that he has instructed his team to be on high alert. I'm going to break out of funny Nick mode for a moment to say this. The vast majority of ICOs are absolute shams. That's why I make fun of a lot of them in my videos. Even some of the most legitimate ones are obviously issuing securities with the promise of gains yet not registering them as such. It's not to say that there's no legitimate ones, but if Web 1.0 was the first internet bubble, the blockchain era is the biggest scam artist bubble ever. While the money is flowing though, you gotta get those tokens. Earlier this week, news broke that Korean banks will now allow some deposits from crypto exchanges. A Korean official stated that banks are expected to introduce the system, which will require cryptocurrency exchanges to share users' transaction data with banks. That'll happen later this month or early next month. This is an attempt to provide some form of regulation to the system. While it's still a long way to go, U.S. traders are still waiting to hear what regulation the SEC announces domestically. I'd say that there's a general feeling that the era of free money that's currently flooding the system will soon come to an end, at least in the U.S. Yesterday, Stripe published an article that they would be ending support for Bitcoin payments due to a number of reasons, increased fees, long transaction times, and massive volatility. Also included in their article was a shout out to Omize Go, Ethereum, and Stellar, for whom they invested in early on. Stellar supporters celebrated the announcement alongside Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian, who posted a tweet that this year the subreddit to follow is the Stellar subreddit. He didn't include any other commentary on the matter, however, so that's about all I can say. Finally, Senators Rubio and Menendez sent a letter to the Treasury requesting information on our country's ability to stop cryptocurrencies like the one being touted by the Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro. As I mentioned in a prior episode, Russia is working on a similar crypto token that effectively enables the country to evade Western sanctions. Not surprisingly, this project was included in the senator's letter. From a technical standpoint, it's not clear how governments can actually combat this threat, but it is clear that cryptocurrency is on the radar of U.S. legislators and regulators. On that note, 
I'd like to give a quick shout out to Warren G, who ushered in a G-Funk era of regulators that were a highlight of my youth. That's all the time we have for today's crypto news show. Have a great day.